Rallying Cry is one of the most broken sets in PvP, and let me explain why. Whenever you walk around in Cyrodiil, I almost guarantee you 80 to 90% of the population are all running Rallying Cry. And if they're not, they're probably a tank or they're a Nightblade ganker. Everybody can run Rallying Cry because it gives so much stat density and so much value to your character that when you compare this to other sets that we're going to go into here in a minute, it just doesn't even come close. Rallying Cry far exceeds any other defensive sets, maybe even stronger than Mara's Bomb. And that's probably one of the best defensive sets in the game, even Trickery. Um, let, me get, let me kind of go over what this set does for those who don't know what it does. And let me kind of talk about it a little bit later in the video. We're going to discuss some alternatives and different ways that I think that they could adjust Rallying Cry to make it still usable, but not overtuned in its current state. Now, I want to iterate this. If you guys don't know, I do play Nightblade, but I'm looking at this from an objective perspective. Some people will like to think, you know, they're probably commenting now, oh, Zilla just wants to, to make Nightblades even stronger. They, he just wants everybody to have lower critical resistance. And that's not true at all to the slightest degree. I've actually advocated and I was against the nerfs to critical resistance on the armor because I knew they were going to come out with something that's going to basically fix the problem with a new set like they did with Rallying Cry. They've nerfed critical resistance on the armor pieces from 258 to like 120 something, basically nerfed it in half and then brought in a few patches later, Rallying Cry. And that basically solves all the problems and actually you get free damage for it. So without further ado, let me explain what Rallying Cry does and let me go into a step-by-step -step process on why I believe this is the most broken set in the game. So Rallying Cry gives you a two piece of critical chance, a three piece of max magic, a four piece of critical chance and the five piece while battle spirit is active critically healing yourself or an ally causes you and up to 11 other group members within 12 meters to gain 300 weapon and spell damage and 1650 critical resistance for 20 seconds each group member affected reduces weapon and spell damage by 15 and critical resistance by 83 this effect can occur once every 15 seconds so after reading the five piece of rallying cry you maybe have a few questions like how much actually critical resistance is 1650 well, that is a very good question. So I think Zoss should explain this more in percentages rather than arbitrary numbers where we really don't understand what it even is in the first place. So 1650 critical resistance in layman's terms is 25% critical damage mitigation. I actually did a video on this a long, long time ago doing critical resistance and mitigation explained. And I basically deep dive into all that, but as a quick TLDR version, how critical resistance works is it doesn't actually reduce your opponent's damage per se. All it does is it affects their critical damage modifier rate. So if you go into your stat sheet on your character sheet, everybody has a base crit damage modifier rate of 50%. And basically what that means is they're, they're subtractive from each other. On every character, whether you're, you're a level three or whether you're a max level, you're always gonna have a base crit rate of 50% and a base critical resistance rate of 1320 or 20% critical damage mitigation. So if you have no modifiers at all, no class passives or anything, if you critically strike on someone with no, no critical resistance armor, no nothing, um, no rallying cry on, basically your crit damage attacks is, say you hit for like 1000. And if you critically strike, it's gonna be 30% more because it's subtractive where you have the 50% critical damage modifier rate, 20% critical damage mitigation, they are subtractive. So you have a 30% critical damage modifier on that target. Now there is a critical damage cap of 125%. Actually it's 145% because we have to add in the base critical resistance value. This kind of gets a little bit tricky to some degree, but what I'm trying to explain is, is I think the easiest way to make this palatable is think about critical resistance in terms of certain skills. So race against time, for example, it offers you 10% critical damage increase. So whenever you compare that to something like Rallying Cry, race against time, you need two and a half race against times to basically even out the buff that Rallying Cry provides, if that makes any sense. I think that's the easiest way to explain it so you guys understand it and can correlate this to anything with basic critical resistance. And also something to notate just for, for you guys to know, 66 critical resistance equals 1% critical damage mitigation. So that's basically your formula and how you can translate it over uh, to basically armor pieces. They provide you with 2% critical damage mitigation. Rattling Cry offers more critical resistance than even the buff Major Force. So that's the intricacies of this set and how it functions and how it works. Now it does get reduced based on the people that are in your group, but not by much. 
so you're talking about dropping 60 damage to 240 if you have four people in your group and about 1320 or 20 percent critical mitigation if you have four people in your group so you're talking 40 percent critical mitigation from running rallying cry with four people in your group plus giving all of your allies an extra 240 weapon to spell damage absolutely insane and mind-bogglingly strong when you compare this to sets like transmutation that give you 1400 critical resistance which is far less than rallying cry and rallying cry can be back bar transmutation really can't be because the buff only lasts for five, or five seconds while rallying cry buff lasts for 20 seconds and then you compare this to something like Powerful Assault, which I actually used to run this on my Stam DK quite a long time ago. Um, but since Rallying Cry came out, there's no reason to run this. Um, Powerful Assault gives you 307 weapon to spell damage for 15 seconds. Now it's seven, net, seven damage more. And it also applies to all your group members and there's no diminishing returns. However, still, if you're by yourself, Rallying Cry is a much better option because you're also getting the extra 25% critical damage mitigation. So not only does Rallying Cry give you more critical resistance than Transmutation, but it also gives you on par damage with a set like Powerful Assault. The five piece has two sets in one. That is why this set is so powerful and so strong. Now I understand that Transmutation is used for more type of healers and Powerful Assault is used for some type of tanks to some degree, especially in PVE, they use that set quite often. And Powerful Assault really isn't used too much in PVP since Rallying Cry came out. Another reason why I think Rallying Cry is so widely used is it plays in the current meta we are in, where you have a front bar set, a back bar set, a mythic item, a monster set, and a one piece of training. That is the basics of every build that you'll see in PVP. 95% of people are running that. And then the other 5% are probably Mag Sork stacking Max Magic. And we all know how bad bag sorks are right now. So what I'm trying to get at is, is it plays right into the meta. And it, if you also want to go even further into that, you have the tank meta that really plays the game in general, where you have people stacking damage and mitigation and tankiness with a rallying cry, further exacerbating the problems with healing potential and overall mitigation, where you have a DK that can hit 10K whips, has 30K resistances, and can sustain forever. There's a big problem, I think, which... With, with the power creep in general and all these major buffs, with Sea Serpent's Coil, with Rallying Cry, it just overall exacerbates a lot of the issues surrounding the tank meta that we've been in for quite a long time. And I think what actually, the, the tank meta is probably for a separate video, but I think one easy way to alleviate some of these problems around how people are so tanky is to reduce the effectiveness of burst heals. I think that's the biggest issue right now. Not healing over times, it's burst healing. Coags, Honor the Deads, healthy offerings, those all need to be nerfed by 10% across the board. But that's a topic for a separate video. So some ways I would suggest to fix Rallying Cry. And this set really isn't the huge, like the biggest problem of all. I think it's definitely one of the strongest sets in the game, but it's it, it, it basically just keeps adding to the pot of problems with the current meta. One way I would change Rallying Cry is to make it to where you actually have, have to have the five piece on. It literally explicitly says while well, Battle Spirit is active. Okay, I would take away the duration of 20 seconds. I would make it to where you couldn't back bar it. I would make it to where you have to double bar this set to get the buff. That would make it on par in similarity to something like transmutation. That's one way to fix it. Make it to where you have to run it on both bars because that's what makes this set so powerful. No stand blade's gonna run this after rallying cry is just double bar. There's no reason to. Uh, you're, you have to double bar it, which you're gonna lose access to, guess what, a mythic item or a monster set. You have to pick between one of those two now at this point. So Rallying Cry would not be used. You'd probably see uh, something like Trickery, Clever Alchemist come back on the back bar. Something of that variation. Uh, that's one way to nerf it. I would also like to see is to reduce basically the stats and the uptime on it. Make it to where even if you still wanted to have a back bar, I think a fair damage number is 175 to 215 somewhere in that ballpark number. It shouldn't be 300. That is the same value as Powerful Assault. There's literally no reason for this set to be just as strong as Powerful Assault. I think some give and take in that regard would be pretty well granted. And I would also, I would nerf the critical resistance to anywhere between 1,000 to 1,320. I would not keep it the same value. 25% is way too much. It should not be bigger than a major buff. It should not be. Uh, I'm sorry. There should be no reason why, like, Major Force is such a unique buff that nobody has access to it that it's really hard to obtain and there's no reason. I think even nerfing the critical resistance all the way down to 10% at 660 critical resistance 
even keeping the damage at like 250 and nerfing the critical resistance to 660, I think would be a much, much more manageable set that you'd actually have some justification where, okay, do I want on rallying prior? Is there something other than rallying prior that I could run? Where you actually have to make a, a, a conscious choice where you don't just put a rallying cry on it because it's literally giving you two sets at one. I think something else you could do is in tandem of nerfing rallying cry is to actually buff the impenetrable trade itself and to buff possibly the CP slottable uh, in the red tree. I think doing both of those things would further increase people's critical resistance even with the nerf. It would broaden out the critical resistance where you're not just so reliant on getting it from rallying cry where you could have other options to get critical resistance and can do a different back bar set and not have to just rely just on rallying cry. Because for those who don't know and only been around for a few years, critical resistance actually used to be 248. So it actually used to give you 4% critical mitigation per piece rather than the current 127. So it was nerfed by 50% just a few years ago. And that's why there's a lot of reliance on rallying cry. If you didn't even want to do that, uh, another way you could adjust this set is to uh, reduce the uptimes on it to make it to where you can't have a hundred percent uptime because if the buff lasts for 20 seconds maybe even some type of variation between a 10 second uptime with a 15 second downtime so you're going to have actually in reality a five second downtime which gives you some opportunity to to take a little bit more damage during that type than that five seconds of downtime there's three ways to adjust the set just off the top of my head it doesn't take rocket science you just have to understand the core concept of the game and where the problem areas of this set are that's my opinion on it. That's why Rallying Cry is broken and probably the strongest defensive set in the game. It, again, I think I can't reiterate this enough. It plays right into the tank meta where you have a high damage, high sustain, and high defense. All, you basically get two of the three things from this set alone. And then you add in something like Tribe Recovery Food. You have the basic class passive that are going to give you your sustain. And now you have all three aspects of what makes the tank meta so problematic in ESO PvP. That's my opinion. Tell me what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, uh, let me know. And that's going to be for me, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.